it doesn't look like a typical comet where you see a beautiful tail of dust uh, stretching away from uh, the direction of the sun. And there will be uh, much better data. The, the best is yet to come. It started as a faint irregularity on a screen, just another dim moat gliding across the star field, until someone noticed it wasn't where the model said it should be. The timestamps were right. The calibration was right. The sky was clear. And yet the object, later tagged 3i Atlas, refused to sit politely on the curve gravity had drawn for it. That tiny mismatch, the kind you'd usually blame on a misaligned dome slit or a warm pixel, was the first hint that something unusual had entered the solar system. At first, nobody panicked. Interstellar visitors aren't common, but we've seen them before. Taumuamua in 2017, Borisov in 2019, brief, confounding, and gone. The working assumption was simple. This was another fragment from a distant birth cloud, a cold traveler warming up as it fell sunward. Point the telescopes, stack the frames, fit the orbit, publish the circular, move on. Then the brightness changed. Comets brighten in gentle sweeps, following distance and sunlight like tide and moon. 3i Atlas did not. Over two nights, its brightness surged by nearly two orders of magnitude, then dropped again as if someone had thrown a switch. Photometry teams reprocessed everything, checked for clouds, moonlight tracking errors. The curve held. It was real. The light wasn't obeying our expectations. It was behaving like a system with modes, on, off, steady, flaring, rather than a lump of ice slowly boiling into space. Color came next. Comet color tells stories. Green from diatomic carbon, blue from ionized carbon monoxide, warm neutral tones from dust. But the color ratios drifting off 3i Atlas didn't march along the usual thermochemical path. They pivoted in hours, shifting from a deep, cold crimson to a washed, electric green, then back again as if spectral filters were being swapped in a machine rather than cooked by sunlight. Observers called it a mood ring, half joking, half unsettled. And then there was the geometry. Dust and iron tails obey the sun. Radiation pressure and solar wind comb material into elegant streamers that always sweep away from the star. It's one of the few clean rules in this chaotic business. But high contrast stacks began to show a narrow, forward-leaning structure, thin, needle-like emission skewed toward the sun rather than away from it. At first glance, it looked impossible. A few veterans waved a hand. Sunward spikes can happen under certain grain sizes and charged states. Gas can fountain briefly toward the star before being swept back. But the length, coherence, and repeatability of 3i Atlas's sunward feature made people sit up straighter. If it was simply sunlight catching a reflective fragment, why did the feature persist when the observing geometry changed? If it was just gas, why did it appear collimated like a beam? When the James Webb Space Telescope pivoted for a closer look, the narrative sharpened further and grew stranger. Webb is merciless. It doesn't give you pictures to pin on a wall as much as it gives you fingerprints of molecules, heat maps of grains, and rhythms in light you didn't know were there. The initial spectral extractions suggested a coma chemistry with more carbon dioxide than you'd expect at that distance, relatively muted water signatures early on, and intermittent spikes in carbon monoxide. That alone would be newsworthy. Comet chemistries are diverse, and interstellar ones can be downright eccentric. But layered over the chemistry was a cadence, small, regular undulations in the light curve, repeating like breath. Every few hours, the flux climbed a little, the mid-infrared heated a little, and the object's position residuals, a polite term for how much it refused to follow the dotted line, nudged in a way that lined up with the rhythm. That was the moment people began whispering about intent without using the word. There are natural ways to get rhythms. Rotate a lumpy nucleus with two or three active vents, and each sunrise can trigger a puff of gas that looks like a beat. Spin a little faster, and the timing sharpens. Add a layer of volatiles buried under a crust and heat can migrate, venting in patterns that feel almost mechanical. But 3i Atlas's timing was uncomfortably clean. 
The brightening wasn't messy. The beats didn't wander. The small non-gravitational pushes lined up a little too well with the cadence in the light. On the ground, imagers pushed for detail. Long, deep stacks, aggressive deconvolution, sunward and anti-sunward masks. The forward feature kept reappearing. Thin, concentrated, often longer sunward than the anti-sunward plume. If you wanted to keep the story ordinary, you could call it a sunward jet that just happened to stay coherent. If you were less charitable, it looked like a directed column, light not merely reflected, but shaped. Spectroscopy added another uncomfortable twist. In several datasets, faint metallic emission lines popped above the noise floor, with nickel features easier to tease out than expected at that distance, and iron features fewer than some models would predict. No one serious leaped to nickel without iron, as a conclusion, the community has learned that extraordinary chemistry requires extraordinary signal-to-noise. But the mere hint of odd metallic behavior reignited debate about past finds. Iron and nickel atoms seen in Comey far from the sun, sublimation mechanisms we don't fully model, and the possibility that interstellar ices trap and release metals differently than our backyard comets do. If you wanted to craft a mystery, you could. If you wanted to craft a measured paper, you'd write. Unusual relative metal line strengths warrant further observation. Meanwhile, the orbit fits grew tense. Classically, you fit the astrometry, let gravity do its dance, and if there's a gentle push from jets, you add non-gravitational parameters to soak up the little drifts. With 3 I Atlas, the little drifts came in packets. Over a few-day window, the best-fit solution added a tiny, periodic nudge that improved the residuals dramatically. Remove the cadence, the residuals frowned. Put it back, they smiled. It was like discovering you could predict the timing of someone's steps by watching the way they breathed. Naturally, the Wilder theories blossomed. Was the object shaping its outgassing with geometry, baffles, cavities, vents, so that sunlight produced thrust in preferred directions? Was it a natural nucleus that happened to have architecture? Or was it not really a comet at all, but a vehicle wearing comet physics like a cloak? A well-known Harvard astrophysicist, famously unafraid of raising hard questions, pointed out the uncomfortable coincidence. Whenever our best instruments stared hardest, when geometry, weather, and telescope time all lined up, the object's behavior edged away from easy interpretation. Not proof of evasion, but fuel for skeptics of the just-another-rock narrative. He didn't declare it artificial. He asked whether we were seeing control loops instead of chaos, systems instead of serendipity. The navigation fed those suspicions. Interstellar objects typically dive in from odd angles. The planetary orbital plane is a suggestion, not a rule. 3i Atlas, by contrast, flattened its path into that plane with unnerving grace, threading through regions that maximized observability when it was quiet and minimized it when things got interesting. That might be luck. The solar system is a big place. Selection bias is real. But align too many lucky coincidences in a row, and they stop feeling like coincidences. Mars loomed as a test. As 3i Atlas swept past the red planet's orbital distance, instruments there were placed on alert. If we ever got a glimpse of an interstellar visitor from another world's neighborhood, even low-resolution timing or a subtle atmospheric perturbation could tie a bow on months of guesswork. No one promised cinematic images. The geometry was marginal and instruments busy. But the idea that a spacecraft orbiting Mars could share a sky with an object from another sun made everyone check their watch and their calibration one more time. Back home, the forward-leaning beam became the star of the argument. Gift it the most conservative reading and you can make it natural. Micron-sized grains briefly fountain sunward before solar wind drags them back. Large, fluffy aggregates align and scatter light into a forward spike. Electric fields carve a transient path. Push the data in the other direction and you can sketch a different picture. A collimated outflow shaped by structure. A luminous column that persists across viewing angles. A feature that looks less like a tail and more like a searchlight. The truth may sit somewhere uncomfortable between. 
nature imitating design so convincingly that we can't tell them apart without flying there. That's the heart of the three-eye atlas puzzle. You can fit most of it with aggressive, creative natural models, exotic ices from a carbon-rich nursery, vents arranged by fracture and chance, rotation periods that sharpen pulses, dust physics that favor forward scattering under very specific conditions. Or you can take the same facts and draw the outline of intention, cadence as control, navigation as planning, geometry as engineering. The data hasn't forced our hand, yet. It has simply made both readings plausible enough that your choice says as much about your priors as it does about the sky. What we do know with confidence is this. The object is interstellar. Its path and speed make that inescapable. Its activity is unusually early and unusually structured. Its brightness rhythm is tighter than most comet vents manage for long. Its forward feature is eye-catching and stubborn. And its orbit, with non-gravitational tweaks included, looks more at home in the planetary plane than we're used to for visitors from afar. What we don't know could fill volumes. We don't know the internal layout of the nucleus, solid, porous, compartmentalized, or honeycombed. We don't know whether the apparent metal line oddities are real or an artifact of signal and subtraction. We don't know whether the cadence locks to thermal cycles on the surface or to something deeper, a moving heat source, a migrating vent, a feedback loop in chemistry. And we don't know whether the forward spike is a trick of dust or a hint of structure. So what happens next? The same thing that always happens when nature throws us a puzzle. More eyes, more wavelengths, more patience. Polarimetry to probe grain size and alignment. High cadence photometry to stress test the rhythm. Does it hold through geometry changes or does it drift? Thermal infrared to nail down size and albedo. Shiny can masquerade as big and dark can pretend to be small. If radar geometry cooperates, a ping to sniff at bulk shape. If not, careful modeling of light curves across phase angles to tease out facets and flats. If the forward feature is dust, polarimetric phase curves will betray it. If it's gas, narrowband filters will blink differently than broadband. And if it's neither, that's its own headline. There's a human layer to all of this that's easy to forget while chasing spectra. Telescopes aren't just glass and gold. They're people coordinating across midnight lines, swapping time, writing emergency scripts, and betting precious hours on the chance that one more sequence will turn an enigma into a result. Some of those people are romantics at heart. Some are skeptics to their bones. All of them are trying to keep a grip on the thin line between a wondrous story and a reproducible truth. Maybe Three-Eye Atlas will settle down. Maybe, as it turns past the sun and drifts back toward the dark, its rhythms will smear, its forward spike will collapse, and its chemistry will fall into ranges we can model without metaphors. We'll publish a dozen careful papers that begin. At first glance, Three-Eye Atlas appeared to an end, within the bounds of known comet physics. That would still be a triumph. New chemistry, new thermal behavior, new lessons about worlds born under alien snow lines. Or maybe it will do the other thing. Maybe the cadence will hold when it shouldn't. Maybe the non-gravitational nudges will align again with that breath-like beat. Maybe the forward beam will persist through geometries that make dust explanations groan. If that happens, the conversation changes, quietly, and then very loudly. We won't leap to craft in a headline. We will instead carve away every natural hypothesis until the shape that remains looks less like geology and more like systems. And then we'll argue for years about what kind of systems could ride between the stars wearing a coma like a veil. Until then, the only honest position is curiosity with sharp edges. The object that broke our shortcuts might still fit our laws. It's our models that are cramped. Or it might be showing us a category we haven't had to name yet. Not a comet, not a ship, but something that borrows from both. Chemistry that can be steered, structure that can be grown, intent expressed as a pattern in life. Whatever it is, it's ours to measure for a short time and remember for a long one. Interstellar visitors are stingy with their minutes. Three-eye atlas will pass. The beam, if it is a beam, will angle away. The cadence, if it is a cadence, will fade into noise. 
What remains will be the traces we took and the care with which we took them. If you came here for certainty, the sky rarely offers it on command. If you came for the moment when a cold point of light forces us to redraw the borders of natural and designed, that's closer than it was a week ago. Keep watching. Keep your skepticism sharp and your wonder sharper. The next frame may make the last one make sense, or break it again. And if you feel a little unsettled that something from another sun can make our rules wobble good, that feeling is called discovery. 